I am uh, a bit weak. I was, I was telling the staff, man, I feel weak as water and haven't had a, a lot of food lately and for the last couple of weeks. But uh, I'm on the mend and giving the Lord praise. I'd rather be at Cross Point Church than the finest hospital in the country. I'll tell you that. Amen. Amen. For those of you that are in small groups, on your way out today, there's study guides for the groups on the info booth to the left. And there's also study guides. If, you, if you're not in a small group and you just want to talk to your spouse or your family and take a deeper dive on what I'm going to share with you today, that would be great. And um, I think it will help a whole, whole lot. So uh, you're going to have to be patient with me. My pace is not where it needs to be yet. So I will stop along the way and catch a breath or two. And we'll do the best we can. And uh, you're the second service, so I've got more time. Just saying. First, I'd like to thank Josh for stepping up and doing an incredible job. He did so good over the last six weeks, and, and in the series behind the scenes, he just knocked that out of the park. Sylvia and I really enjoyed watching him and Marissa under so much tension as the lead pastor and senior pastor for the last six weeks. Uh, we told them, do not call us, handle it. And Marissa forgot a time or two, and, and her mother would say, fix it, handle it, have that meeting, do whatever you got to do, uh, but don't call here again. <laughs> So they, uh, they were a bit stressed uh, by the time the six weeks was over. So Sylvia and I decided to uh, send them on a little weekend getaway, and they decided to go to D.C., where uh, Lennox is doing a little video documentary, and he included uh, President Bison in his video. If you missed that, you need to catch up. Now the president forever be known as President Bison to me because Lennox did it, so there's that. So, uh, but uh, we appreciate them, and they should be home sometime tomorrow. Thank you so much. About a month ago, I preached part one of a sermon about how the Holy Spirit was sent by God to be our guide in this life. Uh, you can find it on our website at crosspoint.church if you missed that. And this intrigues you enough to go back and get the first part of this. And I'm going to do a little review so that you don't necessarily have to, but it was good enough for you to go back. Uh, so I'd like to do that review and then jump into today's teaching, okay? Okay. The Holy Spirit has sent into the world, um, was sent into the world to be our, our guide, our, our spiritual guide for spirit-filled believers. There are, there are many gifts that the Spirit brings into our lives, but leading and guiding us is one of the most important. So I want to ask the question, and then I want to try to answer it the right way today, but who is guiding your life? Where are you finding your information from? How are you deciding what choices to make and what steps to take in your life? And I want to tell you, deciding who's going to guide your life, it matters. It matters. Now, you're going to think I'm going off on a tangent because I have a few pet peeves, and, and this is one of them, but it's not intended to be uh, belligerent about it, but I want to make a point using one of my pet peeves because I think it's important to kind of set the pattern for the rest of this sermon. It bothers me when Christian people leave bad reviews for churches or faith-based organizations. And some of you have done that, and I'm hoping that I make a good enough point today that you go back and you fix that, and you do this the right way. If you've got something good to say, I think you ought to say it, and you ought to promote, you ought to promote the body of Christ in the best possible light because there's unbelievers out there that's looking for any reason not to lean into faith. And if you give them one, I have said, and I'm doubling down on this, you'll stand before God and you'll give an account for that, okay? If you push anybody, it'd be better, the Bible says, that a millstone be hanged around your neck and be cast into the sea than to offend one of these new believers or somebody that's leaning into faith when you break the Scripture down and parse it correctly. If you're doing anything to push them away, that's going to be a problem for you uh, when you stand before God. But if you spread negative information, do all the positive stuff that you can, and you can always find something good to say about somebody. But if you spread negative information about other believers or, or faith-based organizations, it violates Jesus' teaching in Matthew chapter 18, where he said, if you've got all against your brother, go to them and them alone. Didn't say anything about a, a Google review. Okay? 
Uh, Because it hurts the spread of the gospel and it causes people to push away from the faith. So that's important. And and the thing for me is I want our church family to be better. I want them to be smarter and more biblically aligned than that. You should never make spiritual decisions for yourself or your family based on what someone said in a review on Google. Oh, he's back. I'm loaded and ready today. I'm just saying. Uh, this not, it's not biblical. It's biblical. It, it, it's illiterate biblically when you do things that are contrary to the teachings of Jesus Christ. And I had a guy that I'm going to use his review next Sunday in my sermon. I'm going to put it up here on the big screen so you can all see it. But he left us a one-star review claiming to be a Christian that totally violates the principles and the teachings of Christ. And then I kind of did a little homework and seen he's not just done it here. He's done it a lot of places and claiming to be a believer and it's just, it's, it's biblically illiterate, okay? And I don't want you to be those people. I want you to walk out of here knowing that you're better than that, that God created you for more. Uh, you should never make those decisions for yourself, your family, based on what somebody said about an organization on a Google review. So thus the title of the sermon today, Google or God, choose your guide. Google or God, choose your guide. Now, I told you six weeks ago in part one of this sermon, stop asking lost people for directions. Y'all going to wish Josh was back. I, I, I get it. But whenever someone, somebody claims to be a believer and they leave, they leave bad you know, comments for churches or faith-based organizations, they're not following the teaching of Jesus. And they're not subscribing to his teachings. It's hard to have a, a conversation with somebody that you disagree with. It's nothing. You have these keyboard warriors that are happy to just write ugly things, but they won't do the Bible thing and come talk to you about it which is what Jesus requires of his body of believers, that you sit down and have a conversation and you work out your differences together. And then if they won't hear you, you go get a witness and you try again. And then if they won't hear you, you tell the church. But you don't tell Google, Christ followers. If, now look, if you go to a restaurant and you find maggots in your taters, I'd like to know where that's at. Okay? Got nothing to do with my spiritual life. I just don't want to eat there. So you let me know, and I'll avoid it, okay? Uh, But uh, even then, I think you should put forth some kind of effort to to talk about it with the people that allowed it to happen. So let me me finish by going back and hitting the highlights of what we talked about, uh, the two points I made in part one, and then we'll step into the other points. Number one, the Holy Spirit will help you know what you need to know. If you didn't get sermon notes, you're going to need them, so raise your hand and somebody will make sure they get them to you. And Glenn is going to make it happen. Everybody give Glenn a good cheer, man. He's on it all the time. He's been my right-hand man, armor bearer for 20 years, and I appreciate Glenn. First of all, the Holy Spirit will help you know what you need to know. And I I said this, and again, this is just a review. There are some things in your life that you need to know. Essential information is what I call it. It's important that you know the essentials or you're going to fail. There are things that you don't need to know in life. We call those the non-essentials. And you can pick up all that, all that non-essential information from places like television or social media. Uh, it's just absolutely full of non- non-essential information. Uh, the Holy Spirit came to teach us the essentials. If you put your hands back up there, they've got them now, and they're going to get them to you, so they'll bring you some sermon notes. Okay, number two, the Holy Spirit will help you get to where you need to go. We talked about this. Uh, God's put a dream, a desire, or a vision in your heart, but you're not going you're gonna, to you're get there on your own because here's the deal. When God gives you a dream, it's bigger than your ability and far greater than your resources. If you can do it without God, God didn't give it to you. Can I get a witness on that right there? Amen. God gives dreams and vision bigger than our ability. However, you know, if you, if you let the Holy Spirit guide you, he'll take you to places you've never imagined that you can be. Now, today, I want to pick up with the third thing that the Holy Spirit will do to help you. Number three, the Holy Spirit will help you say the right things. Say the right things. Why is this important? He helps me say what I need to say at the right time and in the right way. Married couples in the room, pay attention. Right? Don't miss this because you don't want to mess this one up. If you're disengaged because, you know, everything I've said so far is kind of too spiritual for you and it doesn't really apply, I promise you, this sermon applies to every phase of your life, every sector of your life. You need to lean in uh, because it's going to matter. If the Holy Spirit helps you say the right things, isn't that something that you want to learn how to do and how to implement 
in your life the next time you find yourself in a loud conversation with your spouse. Amen, PT, preach on. <laughs> I could tell you, you know, I'm a pretty transparent person. I'm going to tell you how it is. I could, I could tell you many, many, many of the dumb things that I've said in arguments with my wife, Sylvia. And so could she. She said she's, she's all in on this sermon, I want to tell you. Amen. If you asked her, however, she'd tell you the most hurtful thing that I've ever said to her happened twice in the first 10 years that we were married. I used the word divorce two times. I, I brought it up in a very loud conversation in which I was just angry. And it wrecked her. It absolutely wrecked her. And she was so mad about it that she, she wrecked me. She took some steps to put me in my place and she got my attention. Um, I, I didn't tell the first service. So I got a little more time. One morning I got up and I couldn't find her. And the car was gone and the kids were gone. And this was after one of those loud conversations. And I said, oh my God, she has left me. I've got to fix this. I'll get, that'll get your attention. She came back and I kissed all over her from the top of her head to the tips of her toes and told her how much I loved her and that I would be a changed man. Have I been a changed man? I apologized to her for last week because she sat right by my hospital bed and put up with some stuff, my moaning and groaning, and I'm thankful that I didn't run her off in the first 10 years, I'm going to tell you, because uh, I finally got my mess together, and it matters. Over the last 30 years of our 40-year marriage, I've done a whole lot better to lean in to the leading and the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I've learned how to slow down my response time when she says or does something or we have one of those loud conversations that I don't like, you know, that's uncomfortable. And that's true for almost all of my conversations with others that are, are laced with tension as a result of conflict or disagreement. I still mess this up once in a while. And, you know, if, you're, if you come up to me and you've got a, a conversation that's got some conflict, it's laced with conflict and tension, and I look at you and, and I just, you know, you've just spilled your guts to me and told me all the things that you don't like, and I look at you and I go, I'll get back to you on that. You want me to get back to you on that, because my nature is to push you back harder than what you pushed me, so I have to reel that in, gather myself, allow the Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me, and then set me up to have a conversation that would have been better Wait it on, then have it in the, in the spur of the moment. Anybody else wired like that in the room? And some of y'all are hypocrites and ain't going to confess nothing. I got you. I understand how it works. But uh, that's just the way it is. And, and, you know, when I wait on the Holy Spirit, here's the thing I'll tell you about people that have struggled with a, a little bit of an anger issue. When I wait on the Holy Spirit, He doesn't always change what I'm going to say. He just changes the way I say it. It's, it still needs to be said, but it's tempered with the, the spirit of, of love instead of the spirit of anger or rage. And, and, you know, that's important. So my life is better when I ask uh, for help. You know, Holy Spirit, tell me what to say and help me say it in the right way. Mark 12, 36, the Holy Spirit led David to say. The Holy Spirit led David to say. He told him things that he needed to say. Now, don't miss this. If you'll slow down and listen to the Holy Spirit, he will calm your troubled, conflicted, angry heart, and he will alleviate the trouble that you behaved yourself into. You did it. He didn't. But he'll still help you get out of the mess that you've created. Now, some of you doubt that, but if you're a Christian, he's already done this for you many, many times over without you even knowing that it happened. Uh, he puts an idea in your mind, uh, you act on it and, it, and it affects someone. You didn't even know it was going to affect them. Maybe you didn't even notice when it did, but it had a powerful impact on their life, and God used you to speak something into their life, right? Because, and you didn't even know it, but it impacts them, and you didn't know it happened. Now, not long ago, a, a young lady who was in the first service, and I got permission to tell a little bit of her story, she came to our small group, uh, her name is Stevie, and she came to our small group for the first time a few weeks back, and she had heard apparently that our group was the best one at Cross Point, so she wanted to come there, and uh, yeah. <laughs> now there's tension in the room. But I asked her permission to share this piece of her story, and it's absolutely affirmation for this part of the sermon today. She told us in small group that she was depressed, she was in a very dark place and dark season in her life, and she needed God to show up. And she kept giving God opportunities, creating space for God in her life where that he could give her 
a sign that he was still active and present, that she had a reason to live. She said, look, I was wondering if I even wanted to continue living or not. And she said that she asked God to help her by showing her a sign that he was still actively engaged with her in her life and that he had a purpose for her. And she said, so I set God up for success. You know, I'd go outside on a cloudy day and look up in the sky at the clouds and say, Lord, if I can just see a cloud that looks like a cross or an angel or whatever, I'll take that as my sign. And then she said nothing happened. And she, you know, she went to a waterfall, a beautiful place, and gave God a chance to speak to her. And God was silent there. But one night she went to, on a Saturday night, I believe, she said she went to um, an event, a viewing, where there was astrologists there with telescopes, and they were looking at the skies. And, and she said, okay, God, everybody can see the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. If I could just see it tonight, I'll take that as a sign that you're active in my life. And you can always see the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. But it wasn't there that night. She said, nobody could find it. It's like the skies weren't clear enough or whatever. And she said she was getting discouraged, and her and her sister were praying, you know, and trying to help her pull out of this dark season. And she said, finally, the next day, I walked into Cross Point Church, and she said, lo and behold, as soon as we walked in, on those screens was the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. She said, I looked at my sister, and she looked at me, and they were like, oh, my God. Because it didn't have anything to do with anything. For some reason, Micah... Just put it up there as a backdrop for the day, and there it was, something she had prayed about. But she had asked God, Lord, do it for me in this way and at this time. But you know that God's timing is not always our timing. He has a reason for doing the things he does when he does them, and we don't always understand it. But all of a sudden, you know, and here's what I'll say about that. Ladies and gentlemen, if the Holy Spirit can use Micah, To bless somebody, my point is, he can sure use you. (laughs) If he hadn't moved, I wouldn't have been so mean to him about it. But he moved, and so I get to take a shot every now and then. I'm just saying the Holy Spirit will lead you to say the right thing at the right time. I've had people come to me, just to take this point and stretch it out a little bit more. I've had people come to me and say, PT, has my wife been talking to you this week? You talk to my children? Because I don't know who you've been talking to, but you, you, was, you was stepping all over me today. How did you know what I needed to hear? It's like you read my mind. Look, when I get it right, it's because I've prayed prayers like this. And this isn't just true for pastors. It's true for you, too, and it can be true for you. I pray, Holy Spirit, I don't know, I don't know what you want me to say today. But speak to me in my study and prep and help me to say what needs to be said because you know who's going to be in the room and what they need to hear. I don't know who's coming, but you know. So help me to to get myself ready for that. I wish I was smart and wise enough to get it right every time. I am not. That's why I must depend on the Holy Spirit to lead me and to say the right thing. If you're blessed by something that I say or something that Josh, Josh says, it's not because we're brilliant orators. Don't say amen, Larry. I don't know where you're at, but you just keep it to yourself. He stepped out. It was a good time for him to leave. <laughs> but it's the truth. It's, it's, because, it's because I live a spirit-led life, and that's important to me in my daily walk with God. And he gives me the right thing to say at the right time and the right place that it needs to be said. And he'll do the same thing for you. It's a biblical principle in teaching. And again, I've never failed to recognize my wife's voice when she calls me on the phone. And we've not always had caller ID. We started dating with rotary dial phones. Anybody remember? You know, it was just, oh my God, it was so bad. But anytime I picked it up with no caller ID and she said, hey, Trace, I knew immediately that it was Sylvia's voice. And listen, folks, the more time you spend with God in His Word or talking to Him in prayer, the easier it's going to be for you to recognize His voice when He tries to speak to you. Okay? Look at this incredible verse, Matthew 10, 19. Do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. This is why the Holy Spirit is here, to know, uh, you know what we need to know, to go where we need to go, to help us say what needs to be said, and say it whenever it needs to be spoken. Number four, the Holy Spirit will help you know God's perfect timing. Y'all, this sounds so basic, but this is going to take a, a real deep dive, and I need you to stay connected because it's going to help you. Okay, I didn't realize how important this was early in my faith walk. But, but I've discovered timing is everything, and God always knows the perfect time for the next step in your life. You can do, here's the deal, you can do the right thing at the wrong time, and it can blow up in your face. Or, to say it another way, you can say the right thing at the wrong time and get punched in the face. Right? 
you got to be careful. Timing is everything, and, and the Holy Spirit helps you know God's perfect timing. Now, I've always had vision for this church and where I believe God wants us to go and, and what he's calling us to do and who he's calling us to be. And I think that God's always been real clear about where he's taking us. I believe the Holy Spirit is leading us for our next step to reach more people far from God. We're going to talk about it two weeks from today on our anniversary Sunday. It's going to be a phenomenal day. You need to be here. But early on, when the Holy Spirit would say to me, uh, Tracy, this is your next step, I was like, okay, I'm ready. Let's go. Crack that door open, and I'll bust it down. I'll get through whatever you need us to do. We're ready right now. And I was often devastated when God gave vision but didn't immediately provide a way for us to facilitate the vision. I'm like, you're the one that gave us this. Where are you, you know? The resources weren't there. The staff wasn't there. The volunteers weren't in place to see that through. There were still holes in the net, and we didn't know how to move forward on it. But let me show you what God has done for us over and over and over again. Uh, the boys are going to, in just a moment, they're going to put this up on the big screen. And I wanted it on the biggest screen in the room, and that's a big one. Uh, and the camera guys are going to zoom out so the people online can see it as well. But if you can get this in your spirit, it will change your life. Here it is, if you guys will put it up. At the right time, I, the Lord, will make it happen. Would you read that with me together? Let's go. At the right time, I, the Lord, will make it happen. Amen? Can I get an amen to that? Amen. I, I have lived this verse my entire life. Listen, please hear what I'm about to say because it will impact every sphere of your life regardless of what you're waiting for right now. I'm going to repeat something that I have said before. Don't trade God's timing for your deadline. Sometimes we try to manipulate God to get him to do what we want him to do when we want him to do it. And I get that, okay? But God's timing is perfect. He's never late. Uh, he always knows what he's doing. And we've got to learn to lean uh, into and trust his will. If you give God a deadline, you're going to end up out of God's will for your life. And never get all the pieces put back together like they're supposed to be again. Your deadline is not nearly as important as living in the will of God. Learning to live in God's will. Waiting on him. That's how you live your best life. At the right time, I, the Lord, will make it happen. Did you know that sometimes... Give me a minute. <laughs> Sometimes God will, will give you a, a, a glance into your future. He'll give you a peek. He, he'll say things like this. And you've got to listen to God when he's talking to you this way. He'll say, you're not ready for where I'm taking you, so I'm going to get you ready. I'm going to spend some time getting you ready. We're going to work on your spiritual maturity, your integrity, your temperament, your road rage. Because the success that you're going to have is going to require more than you can currently handle. Timing is everything. And the Holy Spirit will give you insight into God's timing for your life. He's going to teach you to trust and wait on the Lord. Now, now this means that you don't worry and freak out over delays. Why? Because worry is believing God won't get it right, and, and, and it's a lack of trust in God's timing. God has always given, again, God has always given us vision bigger than our ability, and my vision is always bigger than our resources. When we purchased the, the first five acres of this land, right, right about where we are, there was a, a really nice brick home here with a swimming pool that was really, really nice, and it hurt my feelings to dig up that swimming pool. But we had a church to put here, right? So we bought a home place from the people that had passed on and their children were trying to sell it, and we bought it, and God opened the door for us to get this five acres. Now, I knew that five acres wasn't going to be enough to facilitate our ministry. I didn't know how or when God was going to make it happen, but we needed land more than the five acres, and we had to trust God's timing to make it happen. We looked all over. We, we went miles away from here trying to find land to just, you know, we thought maybe a campus here, maybe somewhere across town or whatever. After 10 years of waiting on God to open the right door, in a three-month span, we went from five acres to 15 acres just that quick. We looked at a lot of land before we added 10 acres more to our property. We got two acres over here, and we got eight acres over here because God thumped the heart of one of our girls that started knocking on doors. Paige, I think she's in the room. I saw Paige somewhere. There she is. Raise your hand away, Paige. She helped us find this land and knocking on doors, and they were not nice to her the first time she knocked on the door. I I'm telling you, they were like, we're not selling. Well, it wasn't God's timing yet. But then out of nowhere, they call her up years later and say, are y'all still interested in the land next door to the church? She knew the answer before she ever called me. I said, yes, we're interested. 
We're very interested. Let's see what we can do. And all of a sudden, God worked it out. We thought we were going to build, again, the next season. We thought we were going to build storage rentals over there to generate income for more ministry to reach people far from God, to reduce debt, and to add staff, and to do the things that we needed to do to carry the gospel. And, and every door that we tried to walk through got slammed in our face. We could not get it done. We stopped knocking on that door, and we moved on. Then the town of Hope Mills calls, and they, you know, they're saying, would y'all be interested in annexation? We'll annex you in, and if you'll do that, we'll rezone all 15 acres and make it commercial property, all 15 of your acres. They did that just as they promised, and our, our property values have gone through the roof. So we thought, hey, with all the things that's happening on, on this road and how busy it is, we'll sell a couple of out, parcel, out parcels over here and pay off our debt, and then we'll, you know, we'll be able to facilitate ministry that way. Maybe that's God's plan for us, that we just sell a little bit uh, to pay for it all and to build the next building and the, eventually the bigger auditorium. And so we, we did that for a little while, waiting on that, and we thought we had that done. Turns out that a very large company, this nationally known retailer, was talking to our realtor, making us think they were really interested, but they were using us as leverage against another piece of property to get them to close the land. And I'm still going to shop there when they show up on this road, okay? Because uh, it's a nice place. But I don't know that they're going to always have the favor and the blessing of the Lord in everything that they do. I'm just saying. We just tell it like it is here, okay? But... Uh, that door closed, and here we are in a holding pattern again, waiting on God. So a few weeks back, before my little hospital hiatus, as I call it, uh, we went to meet with our realtor, Mr. Franklin Johnson, and, and uh, I said, look, we, we just kind of wanted to get a feel. We know all that fell through, but uh, can we kind of get a feel for what's going on with the property? Is this, you know, we're just exploring options. And we met with him, and, and he, he basically said, look, I get calls on this property every day. Restaurants, grocery stores, gas stations. He told us that Ramsey Street and Rockfish Road are the hot spots in our county right now. Everybody wants in. He said, but we always get to the same point in the conversation, and they say, do you have sewer on this property? And when I have to tell them no, but it's coming, they said, well, we'll call you back when you get sewer. You can call us back because we can't afford to bring sewer all the way from the high school all the way down here. It cost a million dollars to do that. And he looks at me and said, you know, do y'all want to negotiate, you know, and, and share the, the cost of that? Or do you want to wait for the development right across the street to bring sewer right across the street? Are you willing to wait? <laughs> and I'm like, we're not in a hurry. At the right time, the Lord will make it happen. We're going to wait on the Lord, right? We're not going to try to manipulate God to do what we want him to do. We're not going to get in a hurry and, and mess, up, mess up God's timing. Now, besides, let me ask you this. Just a hypothetical. What if a revival of generosity breaks out at Cross Point and people start giving in an unprecedented way and we don't have to sell any land? What if we could keep it all and use it for the ministry? What if God doesn't want us to sell anything and has a plan to fund our vision that we don't even know about yet? We're not going to trade God's timing for our deadline. God always gives his best to those who wait on him who trust his timing. At the right time, I, the Lord, will make it happen. I just need to stay out of God's way and let him do his thing. Amen? Amen. Some people will manipulate the narrative because they don't trust God's timing. I've made that mistake and paid a high price for it. They give up on God. Listen to me. Just a few little caveats I'll throw out there for you to consider. Being in a relationship will not heal you. Being single won't kill you. And waiting on God is never a waste of your time. You can do whatever you want to with that. Sometimes... God closes a door because you are worth so much more than what is on the other side of that door that you're banging on. Stop knocking and let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. That's true for a relationship. It's true for a career, a job. And I've told you many times, they said no because God has a better yes. Wait on the Lord. Can I get amen in the house? I have missed y'all so much. Okay, here we go. Number five, the Holy Spirit will help you resist things that you can't normally resist. I'm talking about temptation, uh, compulsions, uh, desires, addictions. Let me go back and give you one more quote. Waiting on God's perfect timing. When God opens the right door, you're suddenly going to realize that the devil tried so hard to get you to walk, or why the devil tried so hard to get you to walk through the wrong door, okay? 
But now we're on number five. The Holy Spirit will help you resist things that you don't have the ability normally to resist. I'm talking about temptations, compulsions, desires, addictions. Uh, again, Galatians 5, 17, the desires of self-indulgence are always in opposition to the Spirit. And they're going to leave that up for us. In other words, what I naturally like to do is usually opposite of what the Holy Spirit is calling me or setting me up to do in my life. This is important, so don't miss this. He's saying here, the desires of the Spirit are in opposition to your self-indulgence, which prevent us from doing the things you want to do. But when you are led by the Spirit, you are not in bondage to the law. He's saying the Holy Spirit's power is stronger than your willpower. You, you know, I, people say things like this all the time. I really wish I could stop saying things like that. I really wish that I could stop acting that way. I wish I could stop being so angry. I wish I could stop being so shy, so impatient. I wish I could control the lust in my heart and in my mind or the road rage when I'm driving, you know. I wish I could just stop being that person. Listen, the Holy Spirit's power is stronger than your willpower. You need a life led by the Holy Spirit of God. Can I get amen in the house? Man, it would change the way you live and how you walk out your life. By the way, this is the, the huge advantage that Celebrate Recovery has over every other addiction recovery program. Shane is here. There you are. You changed seats on me. Stand up, Shane. Uh, give him a good cheer. Let me tell you what, what God's using him to do. He's, he's uh, phasing out of the military, and he's starting a new career, and, and what he's doing is he's... Uh, opened up, and God just did this. And I told him, be patient, because God's timing is not ours. It takes time to get legs on a new ministry like this. But um, he has started a branch of Celebrate Recovery on Fort Liberty. They've given him a place to meet. And I went to the first meeting. This is a spirit-led ministry that's just vibrantly filled with the Holy Spirit and biblical principles, and, and, and there's, there's not another one like it. Just keep standing. I ain't done yet. <laughs> you see, I went to the first meeting to kind of just be there to support, and I found my way through Bragg and found this chapel, and, and we went in. They gave us a nice room, and there was uh, uh, some of our people, Mike and some of the others, and, and Rockfish people. Rockfish Church has partnered with us to try to help us get this up and going. They have a branch at their church, and Tony Mack is a very good friend of mine, the pastor there. But I walked in this meeting, and I'm watching him. Man, he was so prepared and so, you know, organized and had everything laid out just perfectly. And I don't know, there was 12 or 15 of us in the room and a couple of people that were there actually that needed the program. And, uh, they, you know, people started uh, testifying. It's what, I call, what we call testimonies in our, in our church, but it was different for them. But uh, they, start, they start, you know, sharing things. And I'm telling you all, all of a sudden, I wanted to confess the worst things in my life. I, I felt it, and I, I, had to, I, had to, I wanted to stand up and say, my name is Tracy Pounders, and I have a problem controlling my anger. I'd like to throat punch some people sometimes. <laughs> they really get on my nerves, but I'm working on it. I'm in recovery. I didn't do it. I saved it for you here today. We're going to get another bad review. I know it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Somebody don't like this kind of church. But this guy has started a new ministry on Fort Liberty, and God's going to use this in an unprecedented way. Let me tell you why. Let me back up just a little bit. You can sit down now, Shane. But he's, he's killing it. He's doing a great job. He's doing a great job. Celebrate Recovery is based on the ability of the Holy Spirit in you to break the power of addiction in your life, whatever addiction that you may be struggling with. It's not just willpower that's helping us stay sober, clean, or free from the habits, hurts, hang-ups, addictions that, that we're dealing with in everyday life. Galatians 5.16 says this, If you're guided by the Spirit, you won't fulfill the selfish desires of your sinful nature. They're, they're going to leave that one up there for a minute. Notice it, what it does not say. It does not say, if you're guided by the Spirit, you won't have selfish desires. It doesn't say that. You're going to have them. You're going to have them. It doesn't say that you won't have them. It says you won't fulfill them. You won't fulfill them. This is very important. Whatever your area of weakness is, whether it's sexual addiction, pornography, anger, drugs, money, alcohol, whatever, you're going to struggle with it the rest of your life because the devil will always hit you at the weakest, uh, most vulnerable point in your life. He always tries to pull the chain apart at the weakest link, right? 
It's just the way he operates. It doesn't say when you follow the Spirit that you're no longer going to have any temptation. Look, you'll never have an area in your life where you're temptation-free. It just says if you walk in the Spirit, if you're guided by the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You may still have the natural attraction the rest of your life, but an attraction is not an action. Attraction is not sin. Action is the sin problem that all of us have in this world. Now, the Holy Spirit gives me the power to say no because there are some other things that are far more important to me. So I'll be able to resist the thing that I can't normally resist. Some of you need help dealing with addiction. Let me tell you something now. I'm going I'm to slow this train down just a little bit. I've asked Shane to stay for this service, and he's going to be standing right over there, and there's going to be people that's going to come get T-shirts as brand-new believers that's making decisions for Christ today and Bibles, whatever you need. But he's going to be standing over there. And I, if, if you're a person that's struggling with some kind of thing, this, this sinful nature that's just dominating your days or your mind or whatever it is, I, I came to tell you this is a spirit-led program called Celebrate Recovery. And you don't need to be bashful about asking for help. You need to get some boldness in your spirit, and you need to walk up here. And I don't give a holy hoot what anybody in the room says or thinks about me. Who cares, man? A royal rip. <laughs> Who cares? It doesn't matter. We're all sinners in need of a Savior. We all have problems. Quit hiding that and find some help. And there's help here. And he'll tell you where they meet. He'll tell you how to get there, what time. It's Wednesday nights, right? And it said one of the chapels on base, see Shane, and take the step and get some help. This is a spirit-led ministry. Everybody say, celebrate recovery. Make the connection. Here's the man right here that can help you take the, the next step of being led by the Spirit and overcoming the desires of the flesh. So God can get you there, and he will get you there, but you've got to take the step. Number six, the Holy Spirit will help you avoid dangers and mistakes. Part of the Holy Spirit's job is to protect you and to shield you. The Bible uses the words shield, shelter, defender, to keep you from disaster. Uh, he's going to be your protector, your rock. It's the Holy Spirit's job to protect you from the dangers and the mistakes. Now, one of the ways he's, he does this is, is by setting... I'm almost done, so hang in there. I, I've missed a lot. I'm, I'm playing catch-up, but I'm doing it fast, okay? One of the ways he does this is by setting up warning signs, caution lights, if you will, and yes, the Holy Spirit is there to encourage you and to exhort you to good works. But sometimes he goes, he'll get in your ear and he'll go, don't you do it. Don't you do it. Anybody ever had that happen? I mean, he's just right there like a megaphone. Don't go down that road, buddy. That's going to be trouble. So if you want to avoid mistakes and dangers in life, you've got to listen to the Holy Spirit. The less I listen to him, the more mistakes I'm going to make. But a spirit-led life is going to lead you to success, and God is going to open doors for you that you need to walk through. The less I listen to him, the more problems I'm going to have, the more dead ends that I'm going to have to deal with. Now, I want you to write this down on your outline somewhere, and this is important. And I want to give you this little bit of an application on this point. I am, I am most likely to hear the Holy Spirit when I am rested and relaxed. When I'm rested and relaxed. It's impossible to hear the Holy Spirit when you're tense, when you're nervous, upset, angry, and especially when fear is dominating your days, whatever that fear may be. You say, how do I know if what I'm hearing is from the Holy Spirit actually talking to me, or how do I know it's God? Look, if there's, if, if there's elements of fear in it, it's not from God, it's not from the Holy Spirit. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Anytime you feel fear, God's not talking to you. The Holy Spirit can warn you, don't do that, but it will never be spiked with fear. He's never going to speak something into your life that causes you to be afraid. Fear is never from the Holy Spirit. Don't ever forget that, okay? So again, if the Holy Spirit leads you, he's going to spare you from a lot of unnecessary pain. Acts 21 and 4, the Holy Spirit warned Paul not to go to Jerusalem. Why did the Holy Spirit warn him not to go there? Because they were plotting his murder in Jerusalem. And the Holy Spirit said, don't go there. He goes, okay. I'm going to go somewhere else. Not going there, right? I'm not going to do it. And he didn't know why, but he didn't go. Now, very quickly, let me give you the application. How does the Holy Spirit guide us? The three most common ways that the Holy Spirit guides our life, number one, by revealing the meaning of what he said. I'm talking about the Bible. If he's the spirit of truth, he's certainly going to use the Bible because the Bible is truth. Can I get an amen in the house? So if you want to know God's will, get into the Word. God's will is found in God's word. Stop looking for a vision. Start looking for a verse. Stop looking for a sign. Start looking for a scripture. 
That's better preaching than what you think it is, I'm just telling you. The spirit of truth will lead you to truth, so he's going to take you to the word. But here's the problem. Sometimes you get to the word, and it doesn't make sense. Anybody else? It's like, what the heck is he talking about? I don't understand this scripture at all. Anybody ever had that problem? Come on, be honest. I think most of us have, right? Or sometimes you read a Bible story, and you go, nice story. What does that have to do with me, right? Ever happened to you? Of course it has. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. We, we not only have the guidebook, but we also have the author and his personal commentary in our ear if we train our ears to hear what he's trying to say. It's the only book where you, you know, that you can read where you can go, now what did you mean by that? And he, and he responded and give you an answer to what he actually meant by that. So you don't just get the guidebook, you get the guide. Sometimes we don't understand a verse in the Bible, but look what the, the Word of God says. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Look, if I'm not a believer, if I don't have the Holy Spirit, there's no way that I'm going to understand the Bible. There's people in the room right now, they're not believers, and they, I'm just talking gibberish to them, and I try not to do that. I try to make my sermons as easy to understand whether you're a believer or whether you're an unbeliever, at least you can walk out of here and say, you know, I may not agree with the dude, but I understood what he was trying to get across, right? So we try to make it as plain as, as what we possibly can. But uh, if I'm not a believer, then there's no spiritual guide in my life to help me understand and implement uh, what I'm hearing from the Scripture. So to understand the truth, I need the Spirit of truth leading and guiding my life. Does that make sense to y'all? Okay, you read the Bible, he reveals to me the meaning of the passage, and you go, wow, I see that, and I see how it actually fits into my life right now. That's called an application. The Holy Spirit gives you the application. He reveals it, he applies it, he illuminates it in your life so that it makes sense. Number two, by reminding me of what he said. He not only reveals the meaning of what he said in the Bible, he also reminds me of what he said. One of the Holy Spirit's job is to remind you of truths that you've already learned. It's his job uh, to be your mental reminder to bring things back to your remembrance. John 14, 26 says, The helper will teach you everything and will cause you to remember all that I told you. This helper is the Holy Spirit. Now, the more the Word of God you put in your mind, the more that he can recall whenever that you need it the most. And this is why you need to listen to and read God's Word every day. You need to fill your mind with God's Word. The more you put in your mind, the more he can remind you. And finally, number three, by giving us nudges and confirmations. Now, these are, are mental impressions often called an internal witness okay the holy spirit bears witness with our spirit it's just a sense that you know internally you know internally um no one has told you this but you know that that you know because the holy spirit has said this is the truth and and it's an internal connection with the power of the holy spirit of god it's hard to recognize this one at first but the longer you walk with god the more distinctly you're going to hear his voice and that sensory that spiritual connection uh, will become more and more vibrant. One more thing, and every time, this is important. This is an application for everybody in the room, too, and I want to I send you out with something good. You don't even have to be a believer to get this. This is a good thing for everybody in the room, whether you're a Jesus follower or not, okay? This is something that you can do, okay? Every time you get a nudge to do something good, to do something good in life every day, do it. Just do that. If you don't, you weaken that sensory muscle that, that hears the promptings of God, the gentle nudges of the Spirit, or whatever, you want to, whatever vernacular you want to apply to that if you're not a believer. You feel a nudge like this, and, and you know you, things will happen, and, and it'll be something like this. Say something nice to that person. Just stop what you're doing and walk over and say something nice to that person. Do something for that person. Send that person a note. You just feel that. Call that person. Pay, hey, pay for their meal. Pay for their meal. Leave a bigger tip. Pray for that person. Just, just pray for them right now. When you feel the nudge to do something good, just do it because you're strengthening the muscle that tunes up your spirit. Then the Holy Spirit knows when I tell them to do something, they're going to they're gonna do it. They're going to obey, and they're going to do it, and they're going to make a difference in the world. Does that make sense? So never delay. If you see somebody, and they look like they're having a hard time, and you think, you know, I should go ask, can I pray for you? Even if they say no, and I've had it happen to me, even if they say no, you've done what the Holy Spirit, you're starting to exercise that spiritual sensory muscle where that you can start paying attention to people's pain 
And God never wastes our pain, right? You want to talk about this in small group this week? God will never waste your pain. He won't waste mine, and he will not waste yours. He will use it as a blessing to help other people going through similar circumstances. And we need to be aware of that. But whenever God speaks to your spirit, you need to follow through and obey what God is trying to tell you to do. So I should go and, and pray. So, all right, real quick, how do I let the Holy Spirit lead me? Let me give you the, review the points I gave to you in the first sermon. You can go back and watch that. Number one, pause and be quiet. Because you can't hear from God with all the distractions and the noises that's going on in our culture today. Number two, humbly ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Number three, be willing to do what he says. Number four, look to God's word. Number five, expect his guidance in faith. And number six, wait for God's response. Wait for God's response. Listen, here's the deal, and I'm done with that part. If you're here this morning and you go, PT, I've never been led by the Spirit before. Maybe you've never invited Jesus Christ to live in your heart. When Jesus comes into your life, his spirit is there. The spirit of God comes into your life. Now, there are gifts of the spirit that will come later as you grow and mature in your faith. And every person doesn't get every gift. And some of you don't want some of the gifts. I understand, okay? But some of them you need to operate in this life. But here's the thing. When Jesus is invited into your life, the Holy Spirit isn't checked at the door. He he lives in you. The manifestation of the Spirit is, and His gifts are still to come, but He's going to be there. And He will lead you and guide you into all truths. So the first step for you, if you've never been led by the Spirit and you've never had these, uh, this ability to, to be led by the Spirit and to do the things and say the things and learn from the things that, that are going on around you and you just feel like your life is in chaos then the first step for you is just to invite Jesus to come into your heart and your life. Two people in the first service prayed this prayer with me. And I was excited to see that. Man, it's good to be back at Cross Point. Y'all are pretty. You're prettier than what I remembered. Okay? But let me tell you this. Don't walk out of this room and, and try to survive in this culture with all the chaos that's going on out there without a helper, without living a spirit-led life. He is there to protect you, to be your encourager, but to to give you warnings and cautions and all the things that you need to navigate successfully in this world. Please don't walk out of this room without inviting Jesus Christ to come into your heart and your life. You're not going to hear angels singing and choirs, but I'm telling you, when you you walk out of here and Jesus is living in your heart, you're going to start to to notice and you're going to start to pay attention to, wow, I've never seen that before. Wow, boy, look what happened to me. Look what God did for me. You're going to start to pay attention to the things that God has uh, helped to activate in your faith, in your life. So with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, if I could beg you, I would. Let Let me tell you this. I needed to get to this room today so I could feel God, and I have felt God in both of these services. When I was laying in a hospital bed, my wife will tell you, when I was laying in a hospital bed last week, I got to the point... I've never felt pain like that in my life. It's been six weeks of misery for me. But when I was laying in that hospital bed, I actually prayed and said, God, if you're not going to heal me, take me. I can't live like this. If you're not going to heal me, just take me. Boy, I'm glad he didn't take me. I'm glad he didn't take me. And I found out, being in the presence of God, there's nothing that compares. There's nothing that compares. There's no life I'd rather live than to lean into his faith and trust him. And God will not waste my pain. He's not going to waste yours, and he's not going to waste mine. I've learned a lot through that suffering, and I'm going to help some other people, and he wants you to do the same. But right now, it starts with a step of inviting Jesus into your life. And the prayer goes like this. Pray it with me, cross pointers. Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I need the Holy Spirit to come and live in my life. I invite you to come and be my helper. I ask you to forgive me, Lord, of all my sins. I give it all to you. Take my life and use me for your greater glory. Thank you for dying on the cross so that I can have eternal life. Because I believe there's more. Come on, I believe there's more to life than this life. The best is yet to come. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give God a good praise offering as you stand to your feet this morning?